What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Jake Shavink here. And in today's video, we are continuing with our 2022 NFL Draft Prospect Profiles. This time, taking a look at Coastal Carolina tight end Isaiah Likely, who is really a fascinating tight end prospect, not just with his game, but kind of also where he's being ranked amongst uh, the draft world, all the way from he's the top guy in the class for some, to he does just make the top five, to he barely makes the top ten. So, the consensus is kind of all over the place with likely. So we're going to take a dive uh, into the profile of the film here and kind of look at how likely's game translates to the next level. And you know how the structure goes on here. We're going to get into a scouting report. We're going to get into some film and then we'll talk projection at the end. So right now, let's get into the scouting report. We're going to flash up on your screen here. And again, what, what makes likely an intriguing prospect is, is the versatility to start with. He can, he can line up in the slot. He can win there. He can line up in line. He can line as a wing type where you get him you know, a little bit of motion or get him the ball quick, or he's the lead blocker in some perimeter run. So he does a lot of different things for you, has sufficient speed. It's not great speed up the seam, but it's sufficient enough. And while we're on that, you know, six, four and a half, two forty five, four eight four 4, 8, 4 RES, a little concerning there. Four eight forty wasn't great. I think he plays a little bit faster than that. Not a ton faster than that, but was productive by the way, 59 catches, 912 yards, 12 touchdowns in 2021. But again, back to the strengths, arrogant hands, and you know, we're going to see that on film when we take a look. He's a good catch point winner, and again, great blocker. And when I talk about great blocker, I mean he's taking on defensive ends in line. He's taking on linebackers second level. He's sealing off, creating space for running backs. When it gets to the perimeter, he is eviscerating defensive backs to spring uh, big runs of the perimeter and spring big post-catch yardage uh, for receivers. And again, he's tough post catch as well as a receiver and he's kind of creative and there's a rep we'll kind of get to and talk about the creativity post catch as well weaknesses it, it just comes down to functional athleticism and routes a little bit for me i think he's good to to above average i think he's in that range in terms of again he's got the outs ins he runs posts runs corners decent hitch routes you'd like to see him work back a little bit more to the quarterback on the vertical plane but really it's it's about the flashes and he flashes these you know dynamic release package against press good work at the top of his stem i just want to see more of that i think we saw more of it in 2020 i don't know why it backed off a little bit in 21 but i just want to see more i want to see it on a consistent basis really and i think you know he does back off some speed times and routes when he's he may be working mesh a little bit over the middle of the field just kind of stops just you know you're not seeing that full speed i want to be at full speed for him so when i get the ball on some of those I'm already full speed. I've transitioned to post catch and I'm getting up the field quickly. So again, we talked about it, that functional athleticism. I don't know. I, he was dominating a lot of lower level competition. Let's, let's be honest. And I do think it, it's, it's going to be a serious jump for him and maybe didn't think as much when you, you look at the live viewings, but it's definitely there again, when you're betting on a guy who's sub five RAS, I know it, there are exceptions, plenty of exceptions to rules, but Normally, in this sense, the more athletic testing, you know, the better athletic testing, I should say, that you have a tight end, you know, the the higher likelihood that it works out. So, but again, not the end-all be-all. I still like likely as a prospect. We're going to get into some film right now, and you'll see why he's really fascinating. All right, now, guys, let's get into the film room here for Isaiah Likely. First rep here, this is where you're going to see a lot of the arrogant hands that we were talking about, a few reps of that. So here we got him in line, first play. Kind of working this leak. He's he's faking the block. He's going to leak out wide here. And yeah, look at him go low. One-handed catch. Easy touchdown on the leak play. But then again, shows you those arrogant hands that you're seeing. Here on a quick out. Once again, one-handed, no problem for him. He's, it just comes easy. Catching the football comes easy. And this is a good rep overall that you want to talk about here. Puts his foot in the ground really well to explode at the top of the route here. It does a good job with his arm, if you saw clear contact yep look at that clear contact and then yeah we're one-handed again here look at this perfect great catch and picks up a little bit as he keeps moving so again the arrogant hands are real great hands and that's going to be important obviously you know when you're in tight space a little more at the catch point where there's contact and you got to work through that so all right here's more of what we're talking about in line so we get a little pitch play here a little option Likely got to get this 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 linebacker, does a great job, initial strike, and then he's carrying him down the field, playing a little bit extra after the whistle, and you're going to see that again here, just on this side of your screen. Gets a little bit on him, but again, watch till the end of the play, drives him all the way out into, some, into something over there. 
He plays to the whistle. He competes his butt off. So here you go. Got him pulling again. We'll start it out over again, but got him pulling on this rep here. And again, he's going to get out in space. You'll see him. Here's here's where DBs, they don't like it. Look at him finish there. That that second bit of, of strike there keeps the, keeps the defender off balance, and we got a spring for a touchdown. Once again, you're going to see him pull. It's, it's a similar play. It's another option play, but again, gets out. Look at this collision. And yeah, we got a guy in the ground here. Springs, once again, a touchdown, believe it or not. Yes, we're going to watch the whole thing. He did score on this play. That's, that's what he brings you. And for teams that are creative with their run game, you're going to like this guy. Again, put him on the ground one more time for me. Easy. Another touchdown for him. Here's what we're talking about when you talk about tough and creative post catch with him. So he's coming onto the screen right now. Again, he's already looking up field, gets off this arm tackle. And what you're going to see, it's hard with the goalpost in the way, but this defender is coming to him. See that plant foot in the ground to kind of freeze. And he kind of stayed square for a bit, stayed patient, makes him miss as well. Pick up a few more yards after the catch. Last couple reps here, just showing off again the receiving ability. Here he is in the slot. We got one-on-one -on -one here. This is what I like to see. Again, I would like to see him jab even a little harder to move this defender out of his way. I think he can do that. We've seen him be flexible enough in the short area. But again, handles contact. We're pretty even here. Quarterback's releasing the ball. What he does a good job of is, again, quarterback places this well in the corner for him. But what you're going to see is him boxing this guy out the, the entire way to secure that catch and score and give Coastal a chance here, yes, to, to tie the game late in the fourth quarter so again when he can seal off that way at the catch point that's great one more clip here this was the big game against arkansas state where he four touchdowns again he was pretty wide open on a couple of them had the 99 yarder but again showed that straight line speed post catch here's what i like to see though quarterback this ball's a little underthrown to the point where you can probably lead this a little more to the sideline doesn't have to make this play but again goes up look at him get vertical here secure the football and get that foot down. Actually got a hand down too, believe it or not, and secure that. So Isaiah likely does so many fascinating things as a prospect. And that's what makes him so intriguing in a tight end class that has a lot of guys who do a good job as like inline players and are just kind of strong possession guys at, at the position. You know, a K-Dot and a Jake, a Jake, a Jake Ferguson. So there, there are guys in that vein, Trey McBride as well, where he kind of provides a little bit some extra in terms of the versatility where you're like, okay, you can play him kind of in this wing and the pistol that they kind of did and you can put him in line and he competes his butt off. He's talked about wanting to be a great blocker. But again, the functional athleticism kind of, it, it's it's hit or miss. There, there are just, again, flashes that I just want to see become more consistent. And I think you can do that with good coaching. This is a guy who has that potential still, has that upside factor to him because he's a very, very good receiver. Where do you play him at the next level? I think you can work with him in line. He's a little smaller, 245, right? So maybe not prototypical in line, but you've seen what he can do in space. So maybe teams will start to look at power slot. And when we talk about power slot, it's just a term that's been coined for like a big slot player. We were talking about this with like guys like Chase Claypool. You know, I'm sure they're going to talk about it with, with Drake London a little bit, David Bell as well. Where these guys who, when you're in 11, which I likely is a tight end, but receiver hybrid, when you're in 11, you have a good blocker who can handle things. You know, when you're running a lot outside zone, when you talk about Sean McVay's offense, you can get a guy who, he's a good blocker, he's a good receiver, and you can put him in the slot because you can, he can handle these guys on the end, these linebackers. So there are a lot of teams that could be lining up for services, and when you think about who it could be, I mean, I think the first one that kind of jumps out, even though they have this guy, is Minnesota because... Irv Smith, you know, he's done a lot H-back. He's been hurt. Like, this is kind of this up-back H-back type that you can get creative with in, in a Kevin O'Connell offense. But then, again, there are a lot of places where, again, just a receiving tight end who blocks his butt off make a lot of sense. Green Bay is another one just because, again, they like their guys to be blockers. And Matt LaFleur can get creative with Isaiah Likely. So, a lot of options for him. We'll see where he goes. Right now, for me, he's in my top five. Had him in my top three before I finished this eval. We'll see. I think he's in the three to five range for me personally. But again, the projection looks decent to the NFL, at least as a receiver. But again, he blocks his butt off. So hope you guys enjoyed this video on Isaiah Likely. Maybe uh, drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Helps a lot. We're growing to 1K. We got a lot more coming before the draft gets going. So I appreciate you guys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Farewell.